Hi, this is Mrs. Slater and today we're going to talk about special right triangles. Um, to identify those relationships between a 30-60-90 and a 45-45-90 degree triangle, we must first utilize the Pythagorean Theorem. So on the first three examples, I would like you to go ahead and use the Pythagorean Theorem to solve for x in each situation. Um, so go ahead and push pause and do so. So as you found out, the first one you get a value of 8, the second one you get a value of 2, and the third one you get a value of 3. If you did not get those, you can push pause and check your work. Now let's talk about the relationship between the sides of a 30-60-90 degree triangle. You may have noticed already that from the leg, the shortest leg, to the hypotenuse, it doubles in every single situation. And that is true for all 30, 60, 90 degree triangles. You may also notice that from the smallest leg to the longest leg, now I can call these both legs because the hypotenuse would, is not considered a leg, uh, that that is going to multiply by square root of 3. And that happens in every situation as well. So those are the two main things that I wanted you to notice when you do these two uh, three problems. Now as far as uh, what is the proof that is behind all of this? I know it is not on your worksheet, uh, but I just wanted you to know why this is always going to work. And to prove it, we can begin with an equilateral triangle. As we know, all the angles in a triangle are 60s, and if we take the altitude of an equilateral triangle and split the triangle into two triangles, it's going to do two things. It's going to create a right angle, because that's the altitude, and an altitude is also going to be a median in any equilateral triangle. So <clears throat> if we consider this segment x, that segment next to it would also have to be x, so that would make the whole entire side 2x. So already you can see the doubling of the triangle. And then the third side we can find out by the Pythagorean Theorem, which is x squared plus the altitude squared equals 2x squared. And when you simplify that, we're going to have altitude squared equaling 4x squared, and then subtracting both uh, sides by x squared leaves you with uh, the square root so my altitude, I'll just call that A, um, is going to be the square root of 3x squared. Now x squared can be simplified, but the radical 3 is going to have to stay inside. So therefore, the middle, or the altitude, will always be x root 3. Now one thing I didn't mention is when we drew that altitude, this also cuts the angle into two congruent angles, which are two 30 degree angles and there is our 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. Okay, so let's go ahead and go on to the next slide, which is all about a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. And again, I want you to discover a relationship between all the sides. First of all, when you have uh, degrees of the same um, angle, that means it's an isosceles triangle. So we already know that this side is six. Same with the other triangle. We know that that's just gonna have to be an X. So with the Pythagorean theorem, we're going to uh, go ahead and solve for x on both of them, and I would like you to push pause and do so. So as you can see, the hypotenuse in the first one is 6 radical 2, and on the second one, the, both of the sides are 7. If you uh, would like to check your work, there are some uh, problems here to, that you can check with. And then hopefully you will notice the relationship between the sides of a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. This will always work where the two sides will be the same, the two legs, and the hypotenuse will always be multiplied by radical 2. It happens in both examples. Now, real quick, I would like to show the proof of a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. You would begin with a right triangle, and uh, we're going to label both sides x because then we know they're going to be the same, and the hypotenuse with c, so then we can use the Pythagorean theorem. And by plugging it into the Pythagorean theorem and solving for c, you end up with x root 2, which is, again, the relationship between the two sides, always multiplying it by a radical 2. So let's go ahead and try some examples. The first one <clears throat> is a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. I'm only going to give you one of the sides on any special right triangle, and you'll notice that on number 2 also for 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. So if we apply what we have just learned, 
the smallest leg is going to be divided by square root of 3. So you're going to end up with 2 for this side. And the relationship between the smallest leg and the hypotenuse is, is just going to double. So we're going to get the two values here. The next part is we have uh, on number 2 is a 45, 45, 90. And from the hypotenuse to the leg, you're going to see that it gets divided by radical 2. And same with the other side. So you get your two remaining sides as 10 and 10. So on the next ones, uh, they're a little tricky just because um, it looks a little different. But the idea is still the same. Uh, anytime you have a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, the two sides will be the same. So that's going to be 8 radical 2. So there's one side we need. And then from leg to hypotenuse is always multiplied. Whatever that side is, sorry about the 3, uh, whatever that side is is going to be multiplied by a radical 2. So you end up with 8 times 2, which is 16. So the hypotenuse length is going to be 16. Okay, um, the next one I want you to go ahead and push pause and try. There's nothing fancy about this one. And hopefully you got 16 for one side and 8 radical 3 for the other. Now for number 5. Again, this one is a little tricky just because you're always used to having the longest leg has the radical 3 on it. But as, again, it, we always go with a pattern from here to here you are going to see that 6 would just be divided by the radical 3 because it's missing. So then you have square root of 3. You have to um, simplify the radical. And you end up with 2 radical 3 as the shortest leg. And then when you go from the shortest leg to the hypotenuse, it will be doubled. So times 2 is going to give you 4 radical 3 for the answer. And those are the two numbers that I'm looking for. So for 6, 7, and 8, I would like you to go ahead and push pause and try to find the two sides of each triangle. Now that you've completed that, I would like you to check your answers. And I also want to go ahead and go on to number 9. Uh, this one right here, I'm going to um, talk to you about a different way to solve these, and you might like it better. So I'm always, um, I want to show you two different ways. So first of all, we know the 30, 60, 90 will always have a pattern of x is the smallest, it's opposite of the smallest angle, and x root 3 is always sm opposite of the, of the 60 degree, and 2x is always opposite of the 90. So if you keep that in mind, um, I just want to show you for the ones that are a little different than like the first ones we saw. If you know that this side is the shortest side, set that equal to x. So x is going to equal 6 radical 3. Okay, so then if you know that x equals 6 radical 3, all you would have to do now is plug it in wherever you see an x here and an x here, and then you can get the other two sides. So for example, this would be 6 radical 3 root 3, which is 6 times 3, which is 18. So that gives you the side opposite of 60. Okay, this one, 2 times 6 radical 3, gives you the answer of 12 radical 3, which is the opposite of the 90 degree angle. So you can put 12 radical 3 right there. So maybe that is a different method that you may be uh, more inclined to use. All right, so let's go on to the next one. Here we're going to find the perimeter of the isosceles trapezoid. Now, but when you first start these problems, I first want you to draw an altitude from the two highest vertices of the trapezoid. Because what is going to happen, first of all, a property of isosceles trapezoid is that this is also going to be 60. And if you draw an altitude, it's creating a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. Okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and use our new properties. If the side is 5, that, I'm sorry, if the side is 10, then this little part right here is going to be 5. Isosceles trapezoid means that the left side is going to be 10, and this little chunk right here is going to be 5. 
the 27 is going to help us because the entire thing is 27 and if you take the fives off of each end then what's going to be left over is the um, 17 for the top base. So now all we have to do is add the 17 plus the 10 plus 10 plus 27 to get a perimeter. And that perimeter would be 64. For 11, push pause and find the values of G, Y, J, U, and K using Pythagorean triples and our new special right triangles. So by using a triple, we know that G is going to be 10. By using another triple, I know that Y is going to be 8. And the third triple we're going to have to use, J is going to be 15. And then our special right triangle is right here. So U also has to be 15, leaving K to be 15 radical 2. Now let's use uh, special right triangles for anything on the coordinate plane. If you notice OC is one unit long, so if it's 45, 45, 90, that means DC has to be one unit long, giving a hypotenuse of one square root of two. So if we look at the coordinates of D, you will see that it travels one to the right and one up, so that's gonna be one comma one. The slope of OD is how much is going to rise over run. So that's just going to be a positive one. And if we find OD, we use our special right triangle, which is the radical two. You do not have to put the one in front of it. And this concludes another fun video on geometry. So see you later.